So having played with the histograms a bit, it's time to do what you've been waiting for, which is the box plots. Uh, whether or not you've been waiting for them, we're going to do them. Let's start by just doing one, although that is possibly a questionable use of a box plot to do only one. But let's work on the Allerton Bywater since we're so familiar with this data set. I've selected that column by clicking on the top of it as normal. And if I drop down to this menu again, you can see I've got the same options I had. Later, I'm going to be doing a multiple variable. Let's stick with one variable like we did before. Same as before, I'm going to tell it to use the header as a title. That's going to be even more useful in a moment. And it's given me the histogram that I did before. It's remembered some of the settings, but this time I'm going to use a box plot instead. Hey, if I click on box plot, it's given me a box plot. Now, it is an unusual looking box plot. Uh, this is a very skewed data set, as you can see from the histogram. It's all bunched up to one end, and the box plot is representing that. But it does look unusual because of it. There's no whisker off to the left, because actually the, uh, the left whisker is at zero, and so is the left quartile, the first quartile. And the median, which is this line here, is not much further on than zero. So it's all bunched up there. And you can see that the right-hand whisker, which is either the end of the data or the end of the data which is considered not to be outliers is here and all these crosses are meant to indicate that these things are possibly to be considered as outliers. Now outliers are a pretty arbitrary thing, uh, there's no formal definition of what makes an outlier and what is not. You could argue that things which are more than two standard deviations away from the mean might be considered outliers or you could argue that more than 1.5 times the interquartile range, which is the distance of this box, more than 1.5 times the interquartile range away from the upper quartile or lower quartile is an outlier. Uh, either of those definitions are valid, you'd just better say what you're doing. Actually, Jojibra is using the interquartile range definition to assign that that is the end of the sort of normal data and the rest beyond that are outliers. And if I don't like that it's done that, I can just, using these advanced menu options here, I can just turn off the outliers and it makes the whisker go up to the end of the data, which is just below 21, like we're used to. So that's a box plot. It's, it's not an exciting box plot, and to be honest, box plots are not useful unless you're using them to compare data. That's what they're for. Um, but just in case you were wondering if you wanted it, you can always click on the statistics again like we had before, and you can see where the numbers that it's using to make these box plot sort of lines coming from, and that's the uh, the minimum, the quartile, the first quartile, the median, which is the second quartile, the uh, third quartile, the upper quartile, and the maximum are the ones that it's using to make these things. Actually, though, this is more useful if we do it with all of the data at once, and that's probably what you want to do. So let's do that finally. To do that, I just need to select all of the data. I'm doing that by dragging across the top. I could also do it by clicking on the first column. I could press Control and click on the other columns I want, one at a time. That works, and that's particularly good if you just want to pick a couple of them and they're not connected. Even quicker though, click on that one, hold down shift and click on the last one and it, it selects everything in between. All these little shortcuts are useful tricks. Now I've told it what data to use, I'm going to go back to the analyze button and this time I'm going to ask for a multiple variable analysis. You can tell it's going to do that by the little picture of multiple box plots, that's kind of what box plots are for. Clicking on this gives me the quick summary of the data that it thinks I want to use. Um, even more important than before this time is to tell it to use the header as a title because now I'm going to have sensible ways to tell the difference between the box plots. That's ready to go. I'm going to click on Analyze. Lo and behold, it's given me a nice picture of some stacked box plots. And I had the statistics up there. I'm going to come back to them in a moment. It has named them all nicely because I included the uh, names of the data sets as, as titles there. And to be honest, uh, the, these compared box plots aren't very exciting either, but the, the main conclusion is that they're actually pretty similar. Um, they're all bunched up at one end. You'd expect this to happen for rainfall. They seem to have lots of outliers. Some days you get a lot of rain. Quite often you get none. And that's what this data is appearing to show. You can see that maybe, arguably, Middleton and Otley had a little bit of higher median rainfall, although because it's all so bunched up, it's hard to tell. If you want to actually get down to the fine detail, you click on the statistics option. Maybe you give yourself a bit more space to see this. You can always uh, drag these things forward and backwards to have a look. Uh, and you can see that all the data is here. I've got the number of data bits. I've got the mean, the uh, population standard deviation, the sample standard deviation minimum, first quartile, second quartile, third quartile, maximum, all there. And one other thing to mention that you may have spotted already, and I think why hasn't he mentioned, is that there does seem to be a problem with the number of data points. That Weatherby seems to have fewer uh, data points in there. And that is because of something we may have spotted earlier. If you quickly have a quick look back at the uh, data itself, and I scroll down here, um, 
you can see that if I go far enough down, the weather bead column suddenly starts announcing that it's not available, and then it carries on again. Clearly their weather uh, rain gauge malfunctioned or something. They stopped collecting data for a while. And what's really useful to know is that Jojibra hasn't sort of had a hissy fit, which is what Excel quite often does if it encounters things it doesn't recognize. That's not a number. What do I do with it? Jojibra just ignores that. And that actually, so it's telling you there are the fewer data points that is analyzed in there. And you need to watch out for that sort of thing and check whether that's affected the validity of your data or not. In this case I don't think it has you just got to notice that there are you know, no comparisons for those particular dates so there's a lot of analysis happened on this page and it's very useful to have that happening so automatically and that's pretty uh, that's exactly what box plots are for final thing to mention is that actually if you want to do a little bit more work on what this looks like as ever you could turn or turn off the outliers I'll leave it up to you to figure out whether that's useful uh, but you could also put this into the graphics view so if I click copy to graphics view it's going to do that like it did before. It's now put it on the Jojibra window. There's a few things which are a bit annoying. It's put these little labels. I think they're indicating something to do with the areas. It's not altogether obvious to me what these numbers mean. They are just the labels of these options. And you can see because the algebra view is here, I can turn that off. Uh, if I right click them, I've selected them all and turn off the labels. Just didn't really want them there. And I can zoom out and drag it around. Um, in particular, the scale isn't very helpful, so I'm going to make that a little bit longer. Hold down Shift to drag this scale. That's a little bit better. I can see things spread out. And I can, you know, if I don't care about the right-hand side, I can just zoom in on that bit, and I can start to get some more differentiation to see where the medians are, but that's kind of lost the other bits of data. If I want to spread it out across the screen a bit more, I can drag that scale up. All those things are useful to sort of just make the data look how you want it to look. You can get rid of your spreadsheet view, and you can play around with it to give yourself some customizing options. To be honest, this is what box plots are for, getting multiple on the same scale to compare how things happen. Even in this case, though, their comparisons are pretty boring. They all look pretty similar. But that's what box plots are for, and Jojo is quite good at doing that quickly.